Hello, everyone. Hope you're doing well. I just wanted to come to you with the new news that just got put out. It states that the I team uh, is saying evidence connected to Anna um, Anna's case has been found at the Peabody Trash Facility. And they actually pronounce that differently than I do, but it's the same location. It is where we were looking earlier when we were watching. Um, them search. So it says investigators searching through trash at a transfer station Peabody have found evidence connected to the disappearance of Anna. Sources told WBZI team the mother has been missing since New Year's Day and video from Sky Eye showed investigators wearing protective suits and police officers with dogs at the facility on Newbury Street in Peabody. Police said that Brian Anna's husband is charged with misleading investigators. Sources told the I team that a search warrant was executed at their home. A bloody knife that was found is being tested at the state lab for DNA. It is unclear what evidence was found on Monday in Peabody. Walsh has had investigators or has told investigators that he visited his mother's house in nearby Swampscott on New Year's Day, but got lost. Brian was also seen buying cleaning products in the days after Anna went missing. The prosecutor said sources tell the I team there is evidence that a car that was impounded was recently cleaned. Investigators have been working to retrace Brian's steps using surveillance cameras, cell phone towers, and electronic ankle bracelet that he is wearing as a result of a federal case where he is charged with selling fake Andy Warhol paintings. A judge ordered Brian held on $500,000 cash bail Monday after he was arraigned in Quincy District Court. And here that they're talking about it right now, actually. They're looking for any evidence linking them to the missing Cohasset mother. Sky Eye shows investigators in hazmat suits sifting through mountains of trash. Brian, what do you want the public to know about this case? Hours earlier, her husband, Brian Walsh, appeared to smile as he left the Cohasset Police Department in handcuffs. In court, prosecutors detailed the chilling evidence found in his Cohasset home. Blood was found in the basement area, as well as a knife, which also contains some blood. Walsh is charged with misleading the investigation into the disappearance of his wife, Anna, telling police he last saw her on New Year's Day when she left for a work emergency in Washington, D.C. But investigators say there's no evidence Anna left. Her phone pinged on the first and the second which is after the defendant had said she had left. His defense attorney says Brian has been cooperative. Mr. Walsh has given several interviews. We have consented to searches of his home. And after impounding his car, I-team sources reveal there's evidence that it was recently cleaned. Surveillance cameras also captured Brian at a Home Depot on January 2nd, wearing a black surgical mask, blue surgical gloves, and making a cash purchase. He's on surveillance at that time, purchasing about $450 worth of cleaning supplies. That would include mops, bucket tops, um, TVEX, uh, drop cloths, uh, as well as various kinds of tape. And that's when investigators hope to find buried in all this trash, any of those cleaning supplies, any evidence Brian may have thrown away. And the couple do have three children, three young boys. They're in state custody pending this investigation. Live in Peabody, I'm Tiffany Chan, WBZ News. All right, Tiffany, thank you. Now to a WBZ exclusive, a family friend who was at the New Year's Eve party the night before her disappearance says he didn't see any signs that anything was wrong. He's only speaking to WBZ's Julie McDonald, who's live for us in Cohasset tonight. Julie? Well, David, uh, the husband and wife hosted Jam Mutlu for that New Year's Eve celebration. They cooked, they laughed, they played with the couple's children. He describes an evening here at their home that was completely happy and normal. Now, this friend, Jam, actually met Anna through Brian. He knew the husband first. They've been friends for years. And despite that long friendship, he had suspicions prior to Brian's arrest that there may have been foul play. The whole thing is a tragedy. Julie, the whole thing is a tragedy. Is it's a tragedy. There are, in the words of a friend, there are no no winners in this story. 
It has been agony without Anna, the days stretching into more than a week since the beloved mother, wife, sister, friend, and daughter has been seen. We're in absolute shock and, and disbelief as to Jem Mutlu may have been the very last friend to hug Anna before she disappeared. He'd been hosted by the Cohasset husband and wife just hours before. Brian had cooked an elaborate meal for us and we hugged and celebrated and toasted and just what you do over New Year's. And, and there was a lot of looking forward to, to the new year. A new year now plagued with worry and fear for her safety. Both Anna and, and Brian had, have been individually and, and together very impactful on my life. Um, a part of me had this, this suspicion all along that there may have been foul play and that, that, that somehow it just the story wasn't adding up. Those painful suspicions confirmed when Brian Walsh was arrested for misleading investigators. With a mother missing and a husband in handcuffs, friend's laser focus is on three precious boys. My biggest fear had shifted towards the children. I, I wondered if the, if the children were safe. The Walsh sons are physically safe, and despite frightening details presented in court, Anna Walsh's loved ones pray and plead and cling to a possibility of a mother returning to her sweet sons who need her. Believe it or not, I still have a modicum of a hope that somehow <laughs> I think you got it. And Jem says it's really the only small sense of comfort that friends can find working closely together, staying in communication, dedicating all of their energy and resources and love to really planning for the financial and emotional support of these three boys. We're live in Cohasset tonight. I'm Julie McDonald, WBZ News. A lot of caring people. Julie. All right. I'm going to hook us up to another one. And this is what they were doing, the search, um, of where they were. They also have the art dealer. Uh, he's on right now, actually. I believe here. This is the person that he sorry to switch on you, but this is the person involved with the paintings. Had to hold them accountable, he stopped taking their calls. These are the fake Andy Warhol paintings that Brian Walsh sold a California art dealer as real for eighty thousand dollars back in twenty sixteen. I spoke to Ron Rivlin by phone. He tells me Walsh is a calculated guy, saying I've bought over a thousand Warhols and this is the one and only acquisition that got by me. He was that good. What happened to me is telling of Walsh's masterful ability to coerce people. He, this is not his first rodeo. He's already under federal charges and is you know, being monitored at home. Walsh has been on house arrest for years after pleading guilty in 2021, but he still hasn't been sentenced because he was unable to produce the stolen paintings and allegedly couldn't come up with the nearly $500,000 he owed to three victims as a part of his plea deal. Now he's facing allegations he diverted money from his father's estate. Retired FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffendaffer says more than six years later, this open case still hangs over his head. He is under a lot of stress and strain and pressure. Uh, you know, he's facing these charges. He's facing significant jail time, prison time, I should say. And that causes individuals when they're under all this stress and strain and thinking maybe he's going to lose her and maybe nobody else is going to have her. In a June 2022 letter to the judge, Brian's wife, Anna, wrote that he was a good man, saying Brian has been working consistently on breaking the past habits of his family. And we're all looking forward to the new chapter of his life. But experts say his prior crimes could tie into the allegations that he misled investigators following his wife's disappearance. People who commit significant fraud type charges really do have a character flaw. And that character flaw usually involves narcissism and believing that they can, you know, trick people into believing their narrative. 
Part of Brian's temporary arrangement for that fraud case was that he had a curfew from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Prosecutors say he broke that curfew in the days following Anna's disappearance. In that case today, Brian was held on $500,000 cash bail. Lisa and David. All right. Thank you, Christina. There's even more information about the disappearance of Anna Walsh right now on CBSBoston.com, including interviews with their neighbors in Cohasset. Stay with WBZ for the very latest on this case. Okay, now let me hook you back up to where we were a moment ago. Sorry about that switch. That was a new portion of it, but this is where they are searching here. I-team sources confirming tonight that investigators are combing through a Peabody trash facility looking for evidence connected to a missing Cohasset mother. That comes as Anna Walsh's husband, Brian, faced a judge today. And prosecutors laid out some damning assertions about his alleged lies to investigators. Good evening to you. I'm Ken McLeod and for Chris tonight. Prosecutors say he failed to disclose that he went to a Home Depot after the disappearance where he allegedly bought more than $400 worth of cleaning supplies. There was much more than that that came out in court, but we begin with the breaking details. Investigators searching right now at that trash facility. Let's get right to WBC's Tiffany Chan. She is live for us in Peabody tonight. Ken, investigators with police dogs were searching inside big piles of trash inside this transfer station off Route 1 in Peabody and we're told by I-team sources that this search is in connection with the disappearance of Anna Walsh. Now police are looking for any type of evidence connecting them with the missing Cohasset mother. We want to show you Sky Eye video right now or any of the cleaning supplies that her husband Brian Walsh had purchased any of those items that he may have thrown away. Sky Eye shows investigators in hazmat suits inside the Greenworks facility sifting through mountains of trash and we know the 39 year old mother has not been seen since New Year's Day. We also know that Brian Walsh's vehicle was impounded over the weekend. I-team sources tell us there is evidence that car was recently cleaned. So now investigators will have to retrace Brian Walsh's steps, looking at his cell phone activity, surveillance video, and, and any information they can pull from his GPS ankle monitoring device that he's wearing in connection with a separate federal charge where he's charged with selling fake Andy Warhol paintings. So we know there's a lot of information to comb through, a lot of trash inside of this facility to comb through, and a lot of worried friends and family hoping for any type of information, any type of closure in this case. Live from Peabody, I'm Tiffany Chan, WBZ News. And then I'm going to show you just one more video. And uh, this is, could be interesting hearing their, their opinion on this. Uh, let me ask you guys about this other case while I have you. Um, missing mom in Massachusetts, Anna Walsh with an E on the end of it, W-A-L-S-H-E, uh, missing January 4th. Her husband gets arrested not for murder, but for misleading police, uh, which details as him, they believe, not telling the truth about where he was and when. Uh, but Mark, I got to tell you, you're counseling this guy, get the smile off your face. Uh, and he Googled uh, how to dispose of a 115 pound woman's body and was caught on camera buying $450 worth of cleaning supplies after he told police that at the time that he was buying the cleaning supplies, he was really getting ice cream with their kid. The, you know, when I was talking with your producer about it, I said, there's a, a lot of what you do when you're looking at forensic computer analysis is to look at where it goes and, and kind of the logarithm that's happening as you're doing a search. If you've got a search term in the bar that says, where do I dispose of a 115 pound woman? And it's after she goes missing or right before, that's what we call a bad fact. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Jennifer, I got to tell you, I find in my wife's search history that she's looking at how to uh, bury, you know, a 230 pound big mouth. I'm scared. That's all I know. But they don't arrest him. This is this is the serious question. Why do you arrest him for misleading? Are they hoping that they can make the case and add to the charge? Or are they risking bringing a guy in before they're ready to make the case? And then they may have to let him go. No, I, they have such a strong case, in my opinion, from listening to the hearing in terms of the facts that show that he misled this investigation, uh, especially the fact that he said he got lost going to his mother's house. And now they're conducting a search at a trash facility near his mother's house, also apparently searching the apartment of the mother. Uh, so uh, he made statements that were so ridiculous uh, that I think it's a great case to hold him while they work on the murder charge. And again, you know, what, and by the way, Chris, the case, it's ironic. Go ahead. I'm, Go ahead, I'm just going to say it's ironic because last last week we were discussing why the accused in the Idaho case wasn't saying anything. And I kept saying because they always clients inevitably say something stupid. This is exhibit A of that. 
Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com. So, yeah, that was interesting. Um, but, uh, yeah, ultimately, that is what is stated um, of the the new news was evidence connected to Anna um, has been found in the trash, trash facility. So we don't know yet what. I don't know when they'll release it. I will keep an eye. When I see that they release it, put the info out, I will definitely um, let you guys know exactly what they're saying they found, what, what's the evidence. So hopefully um, they can help bring them closer to finding her and getting answers and, and then get justice. But I appreciate you. Thank you all for listening. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye.